Welcome back to New to Medical Advice Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and coming to you guys the day after Thanksgiving. I am stuffed. I've taken like 12 naps. I've ate so much turkey stuffing and all of that good food. I could sleep until Christmas, but I figured I better get up and get you guys a podcast. So that is what we are doing today. Um, and first off, before I go any well or anymore, I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving, spent it with people you loved and enjoyed. Um, and if not, go hang out with them next year. I came to that conclusion when I moved out here to Phoenix. I, uh, quick little story. I, I came to church one time and it was a different church that I went to with a friend and this girl was like crying. She's like, I just went to Thanksgiving. It was horrible. I uh, was, my family's so mean. And then I, I'll never forget. I was just like, then why would you want to hang out with them? Like, I know we're supposed to be quote unquote family, but if they, if they're not fun and you just are going to cry, well, I want to hang out with them next year. So if you had a great time, hang out with them. If it was a horrible Thanksgiving, rethink your Thanksgiving plans for next year. But I digress, and that doesn't help us about anything with medical device sales, so let's get into medical device sales. Um, today, I wanted to go over, if you're considering medical device sales, what my advice would be. So I really wanted to kind of dig in. You know, I get a lot of messages of people wanting to break into med device. They're kind of on the fence. They've thought about it. They're in college. Um, they're, they're in a job. They just started like a couple, two, three years. Now they're looking at maybe something else transitioning as we all walk through this life. Um, and so I wanted to go into a little advice, pros, cons column for all you guys just are thinking about it because it's just going to be stuff to like, think about, Hey, should you, is this a job for you? Is it something that sounds great? Or, or maybe you'd be better at something else. Um, and the thing I also say, especially if you guys are a college student and you are listening to this, I hear all the time. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'm trying to figure out my life. Welcome to every human being in the world. Like even these 40 year olds that say they have their life together. Let me promise you, they don't. They're just waiting for the next one because everybody has their life together till COVID comes, you get fired and now you're out of a job. So don't feel pressured. I changed my job like 18 times or my, uh, my major. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. I was going to be an occupational therapist and then I was going to be a physical therapist and got accepted to OT school, moved out here, became a personal trainer. And then that journey took me to medical device sales. And that is what I'm currently doing. And I'm hoping to do it for a while. And then, you know, maybe it will be forever. Maybe it won't be, you know, like everyone always asks me, what's your three year plan? I'm like, ask me in three years. Cause I ha I set goals, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen all the time, you know? So just, if you're a college student, hopefully that just takes some pressure off yourself. Uh, you already have enough pressure going on. And just, you know, go try stuff is my advice. And if you hate it, go do something else because that's all you can do. So before we get started, I do want to ask if you guys are listening on the podcast, a five-star review helps us grow this channel, which we hit over a thousand again. So I wanted to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed. It seriously means the world to have you guys uh, press the like and subscribe button on the YouTube. I think I just went from the uh, podcast. That's how much of a daze I'm in right now from eating so much turkey. But yes, if you guys are listening on the podcast, a five-star review helps us grow this channel. If you guys are on YouTube, press like and subscribe. Like I said, we just hit a thousand. And then real quick, these shirts have gone off the rack. I have put an order in. I'm trying to get them. So hopefully I will get an order soon. But it's, I broke in new to medical device sales. I seriously just sent out five this week and now I am officially out. I need to get more uh, because so many people, people are breaking in, which is amazing. I love getting them. I have the pictures. We will be posting them to my website here soon. Uh, the new to medical device sales where you guys can also grab that ebook, but I'm posting it on there because again, it's community. I want you guys to be able to see it. It's a cool shirt. And I will say I've had a lot of compliments on how soft the shirt is. I went and made sure to get it a nice soft shirt. So everyone who's got it has told me the material is nice. So that is a plus as well. But let's get into it. What would be my advice to anyone thinking about medical device sales? So again, this is just to anyone, you know, if you guys are in it, if you guys are going through the process, something to think about. I'm going to start with the cons because why not get the worst out of the way? And then we will go in the pros. So I, I just made five of each, five cons, five pros, kind of weigh them out. I'll kind of jump in, give my opinion on them. And then we will go into it. If you guys hear in a rattling around like that's going on right now, that is my dog, um, Sam. Hey, he is deciding that his kennel is the perfect place to do a chew toy right now. So I apologize if you can hear that. But let's get into it. So the cons. Number one, cons for 
breaking into medical advice or if you're thinking about medical device. Uh, the number one for me was the it's the learning curve. It, as you guys know, if you're trying to break in, it's a tough industry to get into. And once you guys break in, um, there's a there's a very large learning curve because it matters what you're going to go into, whether you know it's ortho, if it's trauma, if it's cardiac, if it's capital, whatever you're going into, each one has its own learning curve. Because, for example, if you're going to go into orthopedics, I know people that are have been in the industry for a year, a year and a half, they still are trying to learn their trades because there's just so much, you know, like I, one of my buddies, he talks about how he has so many pieces that they have to have them. And if they don't, that one can piece can uh, ruin the whole surgery. So it's just, there's such a big learning curve. Even if you're in it for a year or two, you're still such a baby because there's just so much to learn. So you just got to take that into consideration is, you know, I my best advice to everybody is, it's like you're learning a brand new language. And what I mean by that is like for me, if I am if I don't speak French, right? And I'm gonna go speak French. Now I have to go learn everything because I'm a, a baby square one. Same thing here. You gotta learn how the process works. You have to learn how the OR works. You have to learn how your trays are set up. You gotta learn how to troubleshoot. You gotta learn how to put in POs. You gotta learn, like there's just so much to learn. And so there's just a giant learning curve with it. Um, so this has been a talk I have had with people um, because I don't want everyone to think that I'm just trying to push everyone into med device sales. For some people, it's probably not a great uh, career. You know, there's one person that stands out that they had been in uh, the financial services uh, and they were in it for like four or five years. They had a pretty good base and they were just pretty much maxed out at their current position. And they're like, well, I'm thinking of just going to med device sales because, you know, I need something new, uh, there's more growth. And so then our real talk was, is they were probably making just under six figures. And I was like, okay, well, if you come to med device and you become an associate, you're probably gonna take a step back, a couple steps back, right? You're gonna take probably about that 50 to 70K, which again, it's it's just a little less, but something to think about. Then to eventually, you know, three years from now, hopefully be making what you're making now. And then from there, you know, yes, you can make a lot in med device, but you know, it's like learning a new language. And I said, if it was me, in my opinion, because my roommate is an actual financial advisor, I was like, if you're in financial advising and you just don't like where you're at, move to another financial advising company or just become your own like financial advising. And he's like, that's a pretty good, smart move, right? Like, why would, like for him, it was like, my my thing for him was like, why would you go start over? You're going to start at the bottom. You're going to be brand new and you're going to try to build it up. And like in five years, hopefully be where you're at now, maybe a little bit above compared to take all your knowledge, take everybody, you know, go start your own thing or go work somewhere else where there's no cap. So you're not going to max out and then you can grow it from there. And you already have relationships. You're already knowing the business. You don't have to relearn everything compared to if you tried to break into med device sales, you're going to be like trying to learn, you know, where all the OR stuff is, where you're uh, supplies are with the anatomy. If you don't have an anatomy background and an exercise science degree, right? Like there's all that. So that is number one con is it's a giant learning curve for some people that are really in that they've been into a certain career. It's it, their, their industries can still produce what they're looking for. They just need to kind of get creative. Maybe they need to go off on their own. They need to do something else. And maybe just like them, it's as simply as just leaving your company and going to a new company because you're maxed out at your current company instead of going to a brand new industry. So again, not saying that you shouldn't because of that, just do know if you're gonna be making that change, it's a very big learning curve. Number two, I have down the stress. You, it's, a, it's a stressful job, you know, especially depending on what items you're selling. You know, like I talk about there's there's some items that you're the rep for, it's make or break. And what I mean by that is it's a patient's life. If If it doesn't go right, that patient passes away. You know, so like if you're that med device rep, that's stressful. Uh, so it just matters what division you go into. But even same with, you know, like if it's just ortho or if it's just like minimally invasive or whatever. And I'm not meaning just, I shouldn't say just, but it, whatever division you're in, you know, like say you're in hips, right? And you don't have the right part. Well, now that person's hips could not be as great as it could have been, right? That's that's a stress to feel like that person didn't get the best care. Um, so that's something I think about all the time. It is stressful. Then on top of that, put a quota on top of your head where you have to make so much money uh, for the company and you have people chomping down on you asking where all this stuff is. So it can be stressful in that respect. And then also, excuse me, um, just with your people you work with. And when I say that, 
I mean, like the hospitals, staff, all that good stuff, it can be stressful because you can be trying to be helpful. They might not want it, blah, 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 and it goes on. Uh, number three we'll jump right into is staff. I have staff. It can be stressful um, because like I've talked about, you can get a great staff. You can get people that are awesome and that love you and that it's going to be, a, they know what they're doing and it makes your life easier. It makes the surgeries go well. You can also get a staff that does not want to do their job, would rather sit at the computer and have you do everything when you're not supposed to touch anything and they are supposed to do it and then they complain if you tell them what to do because they're doing their job and blah 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 right it can it can turn real quick and now you're just trying to do your job because legally you're not supposed to be touching stuff so they should do it and then you're telling them to do it and they get all mad and they're like why don't you just do it and then it's because they want to sit at the computer and sit on their phone and watch tiktok right it's you know people will do the thing so again it can be stressful in that realm of two is like you can get great staff, but you can get sucky staff. And the sucky staff makes your life way tougher. So something to think about as well. And with that as well, that's something out of your control, right? You can't really, yes, you can control the situation while you're in it. But for example, let's talk about, we've talked about SPD on here, sterile processing, right? You can't really control sterile processing when you walk down and they messed up your trays and they lost pieces of your trays. Well, that just is the staff of them losing your stuff. And now you're stressed because you got to try to find it. Like there's been times I've looked for it hours, had to have them and call them. And then you have to threaten them. I'm like, okay, like this is what I brought in. Here's my proof. I need to talk with your manager because if I, you guys can't find it in a week, you're getting billed and it's going to be $30,000 right? Like that's not the most fun talk to have either, you know, but that, that is the talk you do have to have, uh, especially if they lose it a lot, which can happen as well. So again, that can be a stressor. That can be a con of the job um, with, you know, the staff, the stress, all that. Number four, this is going to, four and five will kind of vary, but number four is hours. Uh, again, this is where I talk to people. Some hours you in, if you're in trauma, as we all know, if you've listened to this, like trauma, Trauma can be rough. And again, I'm not speaking from experience because I've never done trauma. But from my take from when I've talked to a lot of people, trauma can be rough. Trauma can be getting called at 2 a.m. Trauma can be getting called back in at 11 p.m. You could have just worked an 18-hour shift, gone home and slept for four hours and get a call that you need to go back in for a surgery. Like that can be tough. Um, there's also, you know, I've talked to people you get, they get called in on the weekends. They get called in at all time. It's 24 style or 24 seven. And like everybody talks about, this is a lifestyle. It's not a, a nine to five. Um, you know, even with my my division, I'm in a minimally, inv minimally invasive divisions where it's like, I'm not doing most stuff on the weekends. Uh, I'm not working super late nights normally, but like even last week I get called at seven o'clock when my food is on the stove, I'm cooking dinner and they're like, we need you here in 20 minutes because a patient's bleeding out. All right, well, I'm turning off everything it's just sitting uncooked <laughs> on my stove. I have to leave, go to the hospital. And you know, I get done around 830 at night. So it's nothing too crazy. But then it's like, okay, you just started your day at five, or probably like six or 7am. And then you're getting done at 830. And then you're getting back up at 6am to do it again, you know, so just stuff to think about. Um, but that's where I tell everyone, do your research, you never know what your division is going to be, you know, like I would say the reason I chose my division, I'm always open with everybody who calls me is it was about the work life balance. Um, you know, I have a division and a product that, you know, most of the time I'm not getting called in, like I said, on the weekends or anything, I do get called, get called. I've had it probably like four or five times since I've been in the position where I'm getting a call on Sunday afternoon um, or Saturday night, but normally it doesn't make me go in. I can do everything via FaceTime, but normally Monday through Friday, I can have it scheduled. There's some people in that division or some people that it's not, it's Monday through Sunday, you know, it's seven days a week. So just knowing that. And then last one, number five, again, this one's very company dependent, but it's the company rules is what I have by that. And all I mean by that is, each company, each place you guys are going to work in your life are going to have pros and cons. There's going to be some things that you love about them, some things that you probably don't like as much about it. But what I mean by company rules, some company rules are great, some companies are not, but it can make it challenging when you are, if you're worth a company, for example, that is very by the book, by the rules, doing all the stuff, which is a great, you, sh you should probably follow the rules. But then if your competition is not and they don't follow rules, they do stuff that's highly illegal but they get away with it, it can make it challenging if you are the rep in that division to perform. 
because what are you supposed to do? You know, like if they're lying and cheating and stealing and you're not, yeah, they always say that a good guy wins, but it can be challenging and they can do a lot more things that you can't. Um, and so again, I'm not saying that like you should lie, cheat, steal, all the, or gosh, I can't even speak right now. Lie, steal, or cheat. But what I'm saying is what can be tough is, for example, if your company's like, you can't leave equipment here. And then the other company's like, you can leave equipment here. And the other company just leaves their equipment and the hospital uses them and then takes all their disposable and now uses them over and over and over, even though they haven't bought it. And you come in and you're trying to sell it, but they're like, why would we buy your stuff when this company just leaves it and we'll just use it and they're getting the disposable income? Well, that can be a challenge for if you're the other rep, right? And so that's where I say it can be challenging with company rules. And then also just like, you know, social media stuff, like they will, there will be some companies that's like, you can't post anything. And if you post anything, it could be taken down or we'll have uh, HR reach out. Like there's all that stuff as well. So there can be those rules depending on the company um, and what you do. So again, those are like really minor, but it's just something to think about, something to keep in mind that everybody wants to say it's a it's a fair playing field when in reality, it's normally not. People are gonna do certain things. And also just knowing like, hey, company rules about company atmosphere. Each company is super different. So this is why my advice to you guys is do your research because some companies can be great to you and some companies, maybe not so much. So that's where it's important to get do your own research. Now, those are the five. So again, learning curve, stress, staff, hours, company rules. Those are the cons. Again, nothing big, but it can be big, right? If it's important to you. And again, that I should state that it's always going to be dependent on you because hours, some people I talk to, like I've talked to guys, they're like, I want to work 120 hours. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, go work 120. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to work. 15 hour days every single day and do that. But if you want to, you go and do you, you Johnny. All right. So everyone's going to be a little different. Now pros, these are the reasons why you should really think about medical device sales. So number one, I have written down, it's, it's probably my favorite is autonomy. I have a lot of freedom throughout my day. And so what that means is, yes, I'm doing surgeries every day. Yes, I'm running trays. Yes, I'm doing things. But I kind of control my schedule. And when I say kind of, it's like, hey, if I don't have a surgery, I'm going to be doing something else. Maybe I'm sitting here at my office and I'm doing work. Maybe I'm running trays. Maybe I'm going and driving to another hospital doing prospecting. Maybe, right, you can do a lot, bunch of different things. And even when I have hospitals and doctors and surgeries going on, like normally I'm changing. So it's like I'm not working a nine to five where it's like sit down, check in, bam. Every day is different. Every day I have different surgeries going on. Every day they're normally at different locations. And even if they're at the same locations, you know, like it switches up. It's usually with a different surgeon. So again, my, my day is never the same thing over and over, which for me personally, I really do enjoy. I, I don't, I'm not the kind of person who wants to do the same thing every single day on the minute, but you know, that's what this can offer. Number two, helping others. So again, this is a big one, being able to know that your products that you are selling are making an impact on human beings, making their, uh, affecting them in a positive manner. You know, like for example, like we just talked about last week when I go in and a patient's bleeding out and they're like, we're just trying to save their life. And then after they use my product, they're like, here, we found the issue. It got taken care of like that. 10 minutes later, we just changed their life and we're walking out and we're like, good job. We did it bam, and I walk out, right? Like that's cool knowing that my product that we had there and that I was able to be there to be a support for the doctor and the staff just made a positive impact on somebody's life. That is super rewarding. So it makes it like, you know, when you're walking out of the hospital, 8.30, 9 o'clock, whatever time at night, you can smile because it's like, wow, we just saved someone's life or hey, we just made a really big impact on their life and it makes you feel good. So that's number two. I really enjoy part of the job. Number three, I do always put this, we talk about it all the time, financial freedom opportunity. So with Med Device, we just did the last podcast talking about money. Medical device sales is one of those jobs that you can financially become free. If you are good, you and, and not even good, if you are average, if you are an average medical device sales rep, you will most likely make six figures. So for most people, that is crazy. I remember I, I looked up, I think it's like over 120, 130K. Uh, it, you are in the top 10% of America, you know? And if you look at the average med device rep, I know we talked last month 
or last week it was like a hundred and like I think seventy seven thousand, one hundred seventy two thousand dollars. Again, that was with all VPs and every and, and also all different experiences, twenty plus years, whatever. Um, but again, let's just say you're gonna say the average rep makes one hundred and fifty k. You know, if you are an average human being coming from like normal backgrounds like myself, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is you know when you hear it, it's like holy cremoli, like this is more money than my whole family has ever made. This is great, right? So like that's the p opportunity with med device. If you come in, you work hard and you do really good at your job, you can make it to where financially you're you're free. You're not worrying about, you know, a $100 check anymore. You're not worrying about, you know, paying your bills. Like I, I joke around and I always tell people, this is why it's like, it's a humbling uh, beginning. You know, like I talk about money. It's not like that. You First off, you find out money's just a tool, right? Money's not good or bad. It's not um, gonna change your life. In certain aspects, yes, it, it, it can allow you to buy things, it can buy freedom, but it's not going to make you feel any happier. Um, that's why you see people with a lot of money not happy at all because it, happiness is an inside job. So a little, little touch in there. But again, with financial opportunity, with money, you guys, it's money is one of those things that it can just... Uh, you can use it as a tool to buy back your time, right? If you have enough money, you don't have to go work a job you don't like or do things you don't want to because you can afford not to. Um, and so that's the thing with money, you know, with med device, you know, I came in, I moved out here with $1,200 to my name. Like you guys have heard, I was a personal trainer for years. My first year, I think I made like 20K, I said. You know, I I remember I, it would be a struggle. I had to try to keep my groceries at like 30 to 50 bucks a week. And I was like struggling and I was like, man, I can't do this. I remember, you know, when I first moved out here, taking a girl out on a date, like it, <laughs> I was so stressed, like to go out on a date and it was like 50 bucks. And I'm like, um, I don't know if I can buy groceries next month, right? Or next week. Like that was like real life. So I've lived it. Now, when you get into med device and you can make, you know, whatever you do, if it's the 60 K, the 80 K, the six figures, it's, it's just a, it's a rewarding feeling that knowing, Hey, I can take care of me and like get into the opportunity now for like myself, I can start blessing others with it. And that's, and that's the most fun part, right? It's the holidays. Um, we be, were able to go grab stuff, bless other people, because again, that's all money is money's a tool. So once you get yourself taken care of, you know, you might as well go make it easier and, and bless some other people too. So that's my little talk on financial opportunity money. Um, but again, it is one of these careers that if you're good at it, you will make more than six figures and you can have a really good impact on your life and other people's lives. Number four, big one for people, growth. Now, when I talk growth, there's a couple opportunities. Growth for growing your territory, growth for growing you know, your, um, your mindset with what you're learning, all that, because it's always learning um, and it's always growing and it's always changing. But then also growth is like professional growth, you know, for some people, they want to go work for these big companies and they want to, they want to do associate sales rep, sales rep, reg, uh, regional manager, district manager, and then they move up to now they're trying to go into the bigger corporate sides of stuff, right? But like, that's an opportunity with this career. But like I said, you can also just stay sales trainer, you could be like a uh, advanced Tra uh, field sales trainer. Trainer, you could also like you know if you're like a 1099, you you can just grow your territory and make a bunch more money, right? Like the opportunity for growth. If you're just trying to learn more, this is a great place. You're always learning. So again, the opportunity for growth, whether that's you know in your career, whether that's financially, whether that's in your territory, whether that's just uh, learning, it's it's a really great career for that. And then number five, I put security. Again, the thing I want. It's a two double edged thing. So. Security, yes. Healthcare is never going away. Let's just make that very clear. Like people are always going to need healthcare. People are always sick, especially how our society is and how are we eat and we do not exercise. Sickness, illness will always be here. People will always be needing help. And then also, if you guys don't know, like this is the talk I always laugh and have fun with people. It's like, we aren't meant to live as long as we do. And all I mean by that is, you, the reason we now have hip replacements, shoulder replacements, like doing that when we're older, like we, if you think back, back or think back to the day, like people were dying way earlier, like social security, for example, social security came out and it was like, what, 65, because the average life was like 62, right? People weren't living. Now we're living till 70s, 80s, 90s. So it's like, oh, I wasn't meant to. So it's only going to keep going, or though people are always going to be needing knees, hips, ankles, all that, shoulders. 
but it just keeps going on. Cardiac as we live longer. Yeah. So with that, um, so there's that security that you're always going to need health. Now that doesn't mean you're going to be secure in your position because like we just had one of uh, the companies I know just did a giant layoff, right? But the thing is, is if you are a good rep or you are a good in medical device as manager or whatever it is, there is always companies hiring that you will always be able to get a job in this career if you are good enough. So again, healthcare is not going anywhere. You would be able to have security in that job, but that does not mean with your company that, you know, they could go through changes and you're fired within three, five, seven years. Again, and that's not normal, but I'm just saying like, you know, if you look at it, it's most of the time it's people leaving, like reps leaving after two, three, five years, they're going to do a different product. They want a new territory. They're doing something different compared to, you know, the, the later. But again, that can happen where it's like, hey, you're going to get in, you get fired, just like every industry, every job, whatever you do, you can get fired. But security reasons is healthcare is here to stay it will never go away and you can always be that and i and i will state this like i always laugh i have people on my tiktok that are always like your job's going to be obsolete in two years because the robots are coming let me promise you my friends maybe that's true for some products but there are several products and there are a lot of things that a robot cannot do that a rep is going to be able to do. And also if it's just coming in, training the staff, and if it's just standing in there so the staff feels secure, a robot's not doing that, right? So like, I always just laugh because people are always like, oh, your job will be gone in two years. Thank you to the person who is the TikTok expert who probably lives in your mom's basement and still eats McDonald's as a 50 year old, right? Like, I don't care what you say, you're probably wrong. Um, so on that great note, leaving it positive as ever. <laughs> Let's end it. Um, I appreciate you guys. Those are the five pros. Those are the five cons. So again, this was just educational. If you guys are thinking about med device, if you are a college student, if you are on the edge, if you're working at another uh, industry, these are the reasons to consider or not consider med device. So I hope this was helpful. Again, if you guys are watching on YouTube, press that like and subscribe button. If you guys are listening on the podcast, a five-star review helps us grow this channel. If you guys are interested in learning how I was able to receive four job offers from top 30 medical device sale companies without sale, previous sales experience, check out the website where it is new to medical device sales.com. Link is in the description. We will be having that second book get released. Hopefully, I'm hoping within the month. I know I keep saying it. It's officially done. Um, it's now just getting edited and then we will go through all the fun stuff of getting it published and everything. But hopefully, uh, first year out or first year in will be out here soon. Just going over my experience of me being in med Advice for one year, what I wish I uh, knew before, what I've learned, uh, my tips, how I've had success, what I've done to grow my territory um, over almost 200%. So like, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm just sharing all that. And then again, if you guys break in, would love to get you guys one of these I broke in shirts. Again, please be patient with me. If you guys do reach out, I am, uh, I put in an order. I'm waiting to get them back. So hopefully I can get those back soon. But I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you all have a great week and I will see you on the next one. Peace.